Welcome to the RC Audio Sports Weekly Podcast. I'm Bobby Mendez alongside Haley Wilson and Coach Robert Villafranca. And in today's episode, we will talk some volleyball in the playoff stretch, 12A, 5A football in the final week of the regular season, Frontier Bowl, shout outs, and a web gem. But we begin today's episode with basketball. Today starts the season for basketball. Uh, district for women's basketball will start on December 17th. That's right, Bob. Uh, a big game uh, in, in girls basketball now. Thump, thump in the uh, basketball gyms uh, officially today for the uh, girls. And as you said, district doesn't start for about a mo- another month. But uh, here's a glimpse at what we can expect. And we'll, of course, as we get a little closer to that date, we'll uh, go a little more in depth. But uh, the uh, last year in 28-5A, this is the second year of the realignment. So last year in 28-5A, it was the Medina Valley Panthers that won the district. They were undefeated 14-0 and in district. They're the, they're the defending district champs, and they're bringing back uh, this year Clara Arroyos and Ileana uh, um, Morales, two uh, big-time guards. And uh, if I can tangent off just a little bit on that, 28-5A is just chock full of guards. If you love guard play, you'll uh, want to make some 28-5A uh, girls basketball games. But Eliana Arroyos, I mean, I beg your pardon, Clara Arroyos and Eliana Morales coming back for the undefeated defending district champs, uh, Medina Valley. Uh, it was Southwest Legacy that came in second last year, but they are singing a different tune this year as they're two Big guns graduated across the stage. Ashley Corpus and Alyssa Renteria will not be back uh, for Southwest Legacy this year. So we'll get a good look at um, what that Titan pipeline looks like and see if they're going to be able to reload. Uh, they'll have to rebuild. Uh, Harlandale came in third in that district last year. Kasia Sandoval, a, a big freshman, uh, a, a big contributing freshman last year, will be back for her sophomore year. But uh, freshman aside, it's going to be Serena Hernandez and Julissa Rodriguez, two seniors that uh, we talked a lot about last year. And uh, I'm sure that Coach Wendell Mulkey will expect them to lead the group. So Harlandale, again, likely to contend. It was Southside that came in fourth. And Southside has one senior that graduated last year, Madeline Soto. And besides her, they're all coming back. I had a chance to talk to uh, Jessica Cardness, and she's real excited about uh, guards, more guards in 28-5A. She's real excited about a couple of young guards that she's expecting to call on uh, to contribute uh, to this uh, district race. And then uh, uh, the McCullum Cowboys just out of the playoffs last year had a chance to visit with Coach Lopez as well. And he says the Cowboys are ready to contend, uh, so we'll see. Games start Friday. We'll have games and tournaments, and we'll cover those. Uh, but the uh, district won't start for an, another month. And really looking forward to the season and the district season coming up soon. Yeah, I love it, Coach. Uh, it's exciting to hear you kind of talk through some of the, the top players because I'm recognizing some of those games from fall sports. So it's always exciting to see the athletes double, triple dip in all the different sports as the season, the the seasons progress. But as for the boys, they're going to be starting their scrimmages um, Saturday, November 6th. And kind of similar to what coach and what Bobby had said, district season isn't going to start for about a month, but they're going to tip off their games Friday, November 12th. And so we'll do a little bit more of an in-depth analysis of what's to come uh, for district boys basketball uh, as the season gets tipped off, no pun intended, next week. (laughs) Oh, intend those puns. Please intend those puns. (laughs) Well, that uh, will wrap up basketball as, or excuse me, yes, basketball. Um, as one season starts, one season kind of winding down, uh, and that's volleyball. Um, the teams, we want to say that uh, has had three teams eliminated in District 28-5A, and one team still remains from a 28-5A, and that's the, the McCollum Cowboys. Yeah, and so uh, Floresville, just to kind of start off, uh, Floresville lost to Burbank three sets to zero. Um, So their season came to a close. Um, But the future continues to be bright for the team for Floresville. This is their third consecutive trip to the playoffs. And so they're competitive every year. And I'm sure already kind of looking forward to to next year. Um, McCollum, as you had said, Bobby, um, still in it to win it. So they swept the Highland Highlands Owls um, and earned the title of by district champion um, and moved on to play Leander Ruse Friday, November 5th 
at 6.15 p.m. at Fredericksburg High School. So they're looking for a big crowd. Go pack the stands for some exciting playoff volleyball and, uh, you know, cheer on the remaining uh, district representative as these playoffs continue to roll on. The other two teams in 28-5A that uh, clinched playoff berths, uh, Medina Valley fell in the by-district round uh, to uh, Jefferson, culminating a 21-22 and season. They were 10-4 and in uh, district. Uh, the Medina Valley Panthers are in their fourth consecutive uh, playoff appearance. Uh, so they've made the playoffs for four straight years. That streak is, is uh, running. And uh, Spencer McCool, a big part of that four-year stretch, she's a four-year letter. Uh, for the Medina Valley Panthers, and she played her final game as a Panther this past Tuesday. The Harlandale Indians survived to the area round uh, where they fell to Alamo Heights on Thursday night, uh, so they've been uh, uh, eliminated as well. The uh, Harlandale Indians volleyball team, uh, second straight playoff appearance, and special for them, it's the second time that they've made it to the area round uh, that they've made it past the by district round and even perhaps even more special than that a district championship for Harlandale volleyball it's the first one uh, since uh, 2007 it's the first district championship banner that volleyball is going to hang up in that gym since 2007 a, a great season and a nice run uh, for the Medina Valley Panthers and the Harlandale Indians in 28-5A we wish the best to McCollum who will be playing Friday night in the area round the last team remaining in 28-5A volleyball. Again, congratulations to Floresville, Medina Valley, and the Harlandale Indians for all making the playoff run. And of course, yes, we wanna wish the best of luck to the McCollum Cowboys as they continue in playoffs. Now let's move on over to uh, football where football is kind of uh, wrapping up and they're getting ready uh, to go into to playoffs and 12-8, 5A football to be exact. Uh, talking about a very big game coming up this week. It, it is the Dripping Springs uh, Tigers and Seguin Matadors. Uh, that's a big game because a lot of things can happen. If Dripping Springs wins, it's easy, all said and done. They are the sole champion of the district. If Seguin happens to win that game, then there's a battle, a three-way tie for, for that championship. Yeah, and so kind of one of the, the games that's going to play into that picture, or could potentially play into that picture, Bobby, is uh, Friday night's matchup with the Buta Johnson Jaguars and Canyon. So Buta Johnson, 8-1 and one record overall, 5-1 and one record in district, and kind of if some dominoes fall, uh, still have a shot for that, that first place um, in district tie if, like you had said, Bobby, Seguin happens to snatch that game from Dripping Springs and some other things fall into place. So Buta Johnson um, coming off of a tough loss to Dripping Springs last week. Um, and so we'll see if quarterback Jesse Medina, Ethan McAllister, um, running back Aiden Rodriguez can help the Jaguars kind of rebound uh, for that last game of the season. Now, Canyon, uh, they have a four and five record overall, three and three district record going into the final matchup. Um, have been eliminated from the playoffs, but I'm sure that they they do really want to finish out the season strong and finish on a big win, especially for their seniors. So they're coming off of a pretty big win against Harlandale, uh, 135 to eight, and are currently being led by quarterback Drew Barry and Deuce Adams, who have kind of split time and combined for over 2,000 yards on the season so far. So. We'll see how uh, how Friday night's matchup goes. We'll see how things start to round out. Um, and again, Buta Johnson does have a shot at first if they're able to, to snatch that win and some other losses and other things are, are able to shake uh, into place. Well, uh, we've said all along that this district was extremely competitive. So it only stands to reason that the uh, gold ball, that district championship is still in play in the final week. So that we'll all be watching uh, the following those scores to see how that plays out. No spoiler alert. However, as far as the uh, four, four teams that are going to the playoffs, that's been determined uh, by virtue of a vets Memorial victory over Kyle Lehman on Thursday night. Uh, the Patriots uh, took that game 42 to 21 and that solidified the four spots that victory by uh, Vets Memorial virtually eliminated uh, uh, any chance for Canyon to get into the playoffs. So the playoff teams, as, as you guys have said, Dripping Springs, Buta Johnson, uh, Seguin, and uh, Vets Memorial will represent 12-5A Division One 
in in the playoffs. Uh, so uh, it's been a great year. It's been very competitive. This is the second. It's a, for Harlandale and McCullum. It's the first time that they've played in Region Three, and it's a, that I can remember. And uh, uh, another. <clears throat> UIL district realignment will, is scheduled for next Tuesday. I mean, next Tuesday, <laughs> next February. It's on a Tuesday, I believe. And uh, the, uh, of course, that happens every two years. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll keep you posted on that realignment when it comes up. Uh, will Harlandale and McCullum continue to play in Region Three with Austin schools, or will they uh, be realigned once more with Region Four and schools that we are more accustomed to seeing? Uh, McCullum and Harlandale play against in the greater San Antonio area. Yeah, coach, just overall, this 12-5-A district, uh, we've seen a lot of athletes in this district, and uh, it was just a, a very uh, tough year for the Harlandale schools, but it was, uh, it was great to watch uh, a different part of the area that we're not really accustomed to, right? Because We've stayed a lot. Well, we've covered the the Harlandale ISD district. We've kind of stayed within within town for the most part. But uh, getting an opportunity to see see those Austin schools uh, has been a pleasure to watch. You know, we talk about those athletes and they've done great. Uh, the only two teams that we've not covered yet in this twelve five A are the two teams that are playing on Saturday, which is who would that be? Big, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just kind of the biggest rivalry in this town um to two teams are the mccullum cowboys and the harlandale indians uh that game is going to be played saturday night and that will be televised on kcwx so we'll have that game for you as well um i kind of transition into uh, i know we're talking 12a5a but i think we want to uh especially focus right now on on the frontier bowl uh and uh, coach i want to kind of go to you on this you know uh this is the longest rivalry uh, in in the in the San Antonio area. So far, 57 bowl games have been played before. Uh, and if you can imagine, this game just seems to continue to get bigger every year. Can you tell us a little bit about the tradition of this Frontier Bowl game? Uh, well, Bobby, it is uh, the 58th playing of the Frontier Bowl. This uh, uh, rivalry dates back to 1964. Uh, when uh, the game was actually played on what is now the practice field at Harlandale High School before Memorial Stadium was built. When McCullum was first built, uh, the district shared the stadium that was at Harlandale High School. So the first three Frontier Bowls, uh, 64, well, the first four, 64, 65, 66, and 67, were all played on uh, the Harlandale High School campus. Although McCullum was a home team by virtue of winning that uh, coin flip. So uh, in 1964 and every ensuing even year, the McCollum Cowboys are the home team on odd years like 2021, Arlandale is the home team. So you can always keep that. Maybe uh, you want to uh, keep that in the back of your minds when you ask, are we home team or visiting team this year? Well, McCollum home on even teams and uh, Arlandale home on odd teams by virtue of that coin toss. The first four games at Memorial Stadium and then 1968, uh, uh, McCollum and Harlandale moved all their games, including the uh, including Frontier Bowl, over to Memorial Stadium. It was Congressman Henry B. Gonzalez who dedicated the uh, stadium. And uh, the uh, actually in 68 was the first time that the Harlandale McCullum game was week 10. That's when it, I think the rivalry, when you're playing that last week of the game of the season, that kind of intensifies the rivalry a little bit. And as you said, it's it's grown from you know, it's grown, you know, it's grown every year. It's it's just it's a it, the trend is just growing. The uh, before I get too far, it was Fox Tech and Lanier who held uh, the title of the longest running rivalry in uh, San Antonio. That was a Chili Bowl when Fox Tech uh, ceased to play uh, football. The Chili Bowl uh, series ended, and uh, thus uh, the Frontier Bowl became the longest running rivalry in in the San Antonio area. Well, I've taken you up to 1968, Bobby. A lot of games uh, since then. A couple of ties in, uh, in 1970 and 1989. Uh, the last time that this series was tied was nine years ago. We were uh, the, the two teams were tied at 23 wins apiece and and two ties. Uh, and Harlandale pulled that one out in double overtime. It's uh, probably as far if people always ask about which is the greatest Frontier Bowl. It depends on your perspective and what side of the uh, stadium that you're sitting on. 
but as far as uh, an outcome and the suspense of it, it's the only game that's gone into overtime. Those two ties in the history of uh, Frontier Bowl were played before UIL allowed tie breakers. So uh, nine years ago, the series was tied again. Arlendale pulled this one out in a double overtime win. And uh, since then, the Indians have uh, dominated uh, the, um, the rivalry. They have won the last nine since then. So uh, McCullum surely hoping to, to break that curse. And uh, the McCullum community, I'm sure, will show up. Harlandale uh, community would like that curse to just go a little bit longer, you know, I'm sh not to be greedy, but, uh, you know, maybe 10. And uh, uh, so, I mean, there's, a, you know, the, 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 rival the, the rivalry is intense. It's friendly uh, and it's intense at the same time. And I always look forward uh, to uh, week 10 when it's played on week 10. You know, this, this game has been played on week one or actually week zero, uh, week one, week two, week seven, week eight, week nine, week 10. Uh, uh, it's been played on, 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 on in different parts of the schedule as the years have gone through, have got on, but it's always, uh, it's always exciting, especially exciting when it's played in uh, week 10, uh, like this one is, and uh, this one will culminate uh, the seasons for uh, both Harlandale and McCollum as uh, neither one of their seasons will extend into the playoffs. So big, big game looking forward. Well, I, I can say I was uh, cheated out my senior year of the Frontier Bowl experience because we played that game in week one or the first game of the season. That's when uh, we were still 5A, McCullum dropped down to 4A, so we weren't going to be in district play, so we couldn't play them. The final game of the year, we had to play them in the first game of the year, so um, certainly a, a great experience and all that. But, Coach, I do want to mention that you, you are Warpath 1, and if you want to get uh, all the history – of the Frontier Bowl, you can certainly follow Warpath One on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram as well, and you will be amazed by the amount of information that you will find there uh, for all things Frontier Bowl as well. So, um, Haley, I want to transition real quick to you. Uh, I want to, you to share your first Frontier Bowl experience. Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's funny. Uh, I'm originally from Arizona. So this concept of Texas high school football is still amazes me because it just does not compare to what I experienced growing up going to, to high school football games. Um, but I was able to attend my first Frontier Bowl in 2019. So right before kind of the, the pandemic and everything hit the fan. Um, but I was amazed. The amount of food, the, the the dedication from alumni, you know, both new and both old people camping out for hours and hours and hours for, you know, a high school rivalry game was like, oh my gosh, like, this is so legit. How come, how come we didn't do this stuff back in Arizona? I remember I was taking pictures and, and sending them to my family. Um, but it was an incredible experience. I think that the thing that to me is most exciting, just a sense of community across the board. Um, I know it's a rivalry, but you know, you don't, you don't, you didn't have fans being, you know, jerky or, you know, dirty to one another. Everyone was kind of tailgating in the same area. There was two separate sections, but everyone was, you know, chopping it up, talking, saying hi, sharing food, sharing drinks. And so um, to me, the most exciting part about it as, you know, a third party, uh, it was just a sense of community um, and the, the very, very clear sense of like tradition that comes along with it. I, I believe that's that's a great uh, assessment of, of what happens during a Frontier Bowl, and that's why it's so special. And um, Coach Villafranca, could you recall maybe your first uh, Frontier Bowl and what that meant to you? Oh, uh, <laughs> Bobby, I grew up on Rosebud, a block away from Harlandale High School. So we used to walk to games. And as I said, the games used to be played right there on the campus of Harlandale High School. So I was you know, five or six uh, uh, at the uh, for, for my first Frontier Bowl, I can remember walking to many games. Uh, the uh, the the as that the first Frontier Bowls. Anytime you know, anytime you uh, build a new school from an old school uh, like McCullum and Harlandale did, that's going to have a rivalry uh, potential immediately. But I recall uh, just the general experience of going to those ball games back in the uh, late sixties. I will venture to say that Brackenridge, who was a week 10 ball game for Harlandale back then, was the was the really the big game 
Jefferson, Lanier, and the SAISD schools were very, very competitive uh, back then even. Um, but uh, slowly the uh, Frontier Bowl uh, rose to the top of uh, the date that you would serve on. But uh, Bobby, I was, you know, I was five in, in 1964. Uh, there have been 58. I can count, really, I can count four. I know of four Frontier Bowls that I have missed. And uh, that's, uh, you know, every single one of them is, is special. I, you know, if I may, I, you know, I've had the privilege of, you know, attending them as fans. Uh, I got to play in a couple of them. Uh, I had the privilege of, of coaching uh, Harlandale for some years there. My son played for Harlandale, so I attended as a parent. I uh, got to PA some of those Frontier Bowl games and then here more, more recently to, to uh, partner with you and Haley and RC Audio Sports and bring these games to a larger community. So, uh, so many firsts, you know, uh, Frontier Bowls for myself, uh, but uh, you, I'm going to tell you, every single one, 2021 is a first. This is the first time that we're going to broadcast it uh, uh, live. And uh, there's always something, there's, there's something first about every Frontier Bowl. Uh, but yes, uh, just a, a long, long history. And uh, I, I just feel so privileged to have, um, you know, that, that my, my, my path has, has, has paralleled it. And I've been able to enjoy so many of these Frontier Bowls. Well, now we've got the best seat in the house to to watch these games, so we're very lucky for that. Um, I can recall my first Frontier Bowl game. Um, it was my uncle. I think it was 1986. Uh, my uncle Gilbert played in that game, and I can recall getting to the sta stadium. Uh, there was no room to sit down. There was people standing at the end zones. Both sides were full, and I and I just. I only imagine I only seen stuff on TV like that at that time. So I was like, oh, wow, this is is this how every game is? Um, but uh, it was such a great, um, great atmosphere at the time. And then, Coach, you posted um, some stuff on Warpath a few days ago. Um, there were old articles uh, from from many years back. And then I'm I'm, I'm finding myself reading them. And then uh, one of the sections, of course, is they used to post the attendance uh, 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 in the articles. And, oh, I, I, I loved reading 9,000, 12,000, 8,000, like so many people to show up to that game in the stadium. So uh, we're excited. Uh, I know I speak for all of us when I say we're excited and it's uh, it's an emotional time. And, you know, it's the one time everybody kind of kind of has that date on their calendar. So we're 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 talking about all this tradition. <laughs> But Bobby, uh, before you get too far on that, you mentioned uncles and uh, I got to play with your uncle Eladio in uh, 1975, uh, an, an excellent quarterback uh, for the Indians. And uh, so uh, there have been a few Mendezes that have played in uh, that Frontier Bowl. And again, as I speak of the privilege I've had, uh, I, got, I got to play on the same team with your uncle Eladio in, in 75, and that was special. I do want to make a, I do want to make a point about attendance because that's something that I'm asked often uh, about uh, the mo that most highly attended playoff game uh, in, in Frontier Bowl history. And a lot of that, well, I got to be honest with you, a lot of it is eyeball. You know, there's not turnstiles through there. So, you know, uh, so uh, you, you, you measure, you, you measure 7,500 that, 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 uh, that will fit in the, uh, in the, in the bleachers sitting down. And then you try to measure the overflow crowd. So all of those numbers, although they're close, it's very hard to say that any one of them is official and they have reached the 10 and the 12,000, uh, uh, um, numbers, uh, over the years, but, uh, it's hard to, you know, there, there's not an official, that's always a, an argument from about from different classes that theirs was more highly attended, well, uh, I, but uh, that's a, a little bit of an unofficial number. It's close. It's a roundabout. It's an estimate. But yes, well, I, I clearly remember reading in, in the paper that that was up there that was dated back in the 70s or so 60s. Maybe I can't remember, but it said paid for in parentheses and then it had the number. So I, it made me think, oh, did they just let people people walk in at some point? Uh, at, <laughs> well, so what they're counting there is uh, the bands and the spirit groups and yeah. uh, so forth. So you've got, you know, you've got your paid attendance. But you also have, you know, a couple of thousand in the in the spirit groups, bands and and sponsors that come in and all. But uh, I think to my knowledge, I think everybody's paying to get in except the kid, those kids. Well, um, all this talk about the tradition of the game. There's the two teams that actually have to miss out and because they're out on the field and they don't get to partake yet. So they have to wait for that 
privilege to do that. But um, uh, the two teams, all right, we know their records, not the best. Um, we've talked about the difficulty of these two uh, teams districts or the district that they're in, uh, but doesn't matter. You can say that uh, about any other rivalry, uh, but when I look at these two teams, I, I like the way these two teams kind of match up. They both have good offenses. Uh, they both have very aggressive defenses. Uh, I think this is going to be one of those uh, frontier bowls that is going to be one for the ages. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so, Coach, uh, talk about uh, what you anticipate seeing between these two teams uh, going at it Saturday night. Well, Bobby, to your point, uh, it's going to be uh, an exciting uh, Frontier Bowl. I am sure, just like uh, so many of them are, uh, we do have a couple of uh, we do have a couple of offenses that have been able to move the ball. Last week, just last week against Vets Memorial, we saw a pounding running game. Uh, from the McCullum Cowboys, Matt Castillo, who who uh, plays on both sides of the ball, and uh, Gary Escobar, Shantahead, of course, we've seen him and what he can do from the quarterback uh, standpoint. Uh, the Cowboys had some difficulty stopping the big play, but a lot of people <laughs> have had difficulty stopping the big play against the Vets Memorial. We'll see how that defense holds up against another very good offense that the Harlemdale Indians will bring to Memorial Stadium, of course, Joseph Rodriguez, Andrew Chavez uh, there, uh, Saxon Langenberg, still a junior on the, uh, with the wide receiving core. So Harlandale has put points on the board up, and they've moved the ball well. Two good offenses. Uh, uh, Harlandale's front seven, although, uh, you know, an injury here or there, uh, but the front seven has been very stout uh, throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, season. Uh, I think uh, my main focus, uh, I think, will be Harlandale's run defense, against McCullum's run offense and whoever wins that battle, I think is going to win the game. So uh, I, I think it, it will come down to that. And of course, turnovers, special teams and all those things. But the, the biggest matchup, I think to me is when the McCullum offense is on that on the on the field and that Harlandale defense is that that one is going to determine. Haley, how do you see this game going? Yeah, I I uh, I kind of agree with what what coach had said. I see it I see it being kind of an even matchup. I know that for from the from our broadcasting standpoint, I've only really mostly been at McCollum games so far this year. Um, I've missed out at the couple opportunities to to do Har uh, Harlandale at home. Um, but after McCollum's like seeing their their strength and their toughness last week, I know you know that doesn't always get reflected on the scoreboard, but I, I'm thinking it's going to be an even matchup. I'm excited to see what happens. And, and similar to what Coach said, I think from from what I have seen so far, I think these teams stack up pretty evenly. Um, and I, I think it could I think it could be anybody's game um, on Saturday night. One little tidbit here is uh, the uh, winner of this game also uh, ends up with a better record for the season. Uh, by by virtue of head to head as well, so you know I, I guess th th who needs more motivation than scoreboard on the Frontier Bowl game? But uh, anyway, a few things here still at stake, even though uh, the playoffs are off the table for these two groups. Uh, plenty at stake. That lifelong scoreboard is, is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could we could talk about this event and this game for hours, but uh, of course we don't have that much time. Um, so we'll wrap up that portion of it and get on with uh, our episode here but uh this is part where we do shout outs and uh coach i want to go with you first let's uh who do you want to shout out this one's easy bobby uh, athletic director coach roseanne martinez and her crew there at memorial stadium and operations in harlandale isd what a big event this is and there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes i just want to shout out to that athletics uh, director staff and crew and uh everybody in operations that's going to put this uh event together for the community and Haley, how about you? Love it. Mine's kind of along a similar vein. I think it's really cool that uh, the game's being able to, to be on, you know, TV, on cable TV this year. I know you, you coach, you Bobby, and then Hector Ledesma probably worked very hard on that. So I'm giving my shout out to you three. I'm making that happen. I'm excited. And as a, as a former high school athlete, right, I know how exciting it was when you could say, oh, my gosh, the game's on TV. Very cool stuff. So so my shout out is, is going to you all for that. I well, appreciate that. KCWX actually is uh, uh, over the air, so you'll be able to catch it uh, if you've got antenna or on an app, KCWX. Just download the app. 
uh, Coach Spectrum is channel four, everything else is channel two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and my, my shout out will go to uh, the district champs in volleyball, the Harlandale Indians. Uh, they've made the, they've, uh, last time they won that was in 2007. They did it again and they continue to, uh, to do well uh, in volleyball. So that's my shout out. So um, let's move along. And uh, it's one of the things that we've added on and I think it's been pretty cool that we've been doing is, is our web gem. Um, we get to find uh, something on, uh, on the internet that we'd like and we wanna share it with you guys. And this one is going to be a Canyon football, the underclassmen honoring the seniors by carrying them off the field this morning. Um, and uh, the record doesn't show yet, but these guys have started to build a culture of toughness and accountability. So uh, our web gem of the week goes to the Canyon Cougar football team. Uh, Bobby, on that uh, web gem, do you get the idea that some of those seniors were treated a little better than others? <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's yeah. Coach Travis Bush uh, over at Canyon High School building uh, the culture uh, for the Cougars over there in New Braunfels. Uh, I, I love that one. Um, well, this is going to wrap up episode six of our podcast, and we will continue to have more, even though football uh, for for us as we cover the HISD schools and of course we will continue to cover and and post about the information on um, our RC Audio Sports page. Football is just the beginning, Bob. Football just the beginning. We want to thank our uh, sponsors: Martinez and Associates, Sonia Flores with State Farm, On Par Golf, Moda Mortgage, Superior Tax Service. Gilly Mendoza at um, Gilly International. I want to thank you, Coach Robert Villafranca. Thank you, Haley Wilson. We are just about out of time. That's why you hear me rushing. Um, please make sure to follow us on all of our socials. Have a good day, everyone.